Hello, my name is Robert. I'm the developer of Clockwork, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get basic stats with Clockwork set up for your Game Maker game. Um, we're going to start at my website over here. You can access it at madewithclockwork.com. And I'm going to assume that you already have created an account. You can create an account by just clicking on the join up here and typing in all this stuff here. I'm going to log into my existing account. Okay. So, the this is the dashboard and you can get to it by clicking up there. And it is a list when you're logged in, it's a list of all of the games that you've registered with Clockwork. And we're going to create a new game. And let's call it Catch the Clown Example. And we're going to enable stats, but not high scores. I'll explain high scores in a later video. But for now, we're just going to look on. Um, we're going to work on st getting the stats set up. So create the game. And you'll see that we now have an additional game right here called Catch the Clown Example. So we're going to go to this game's settings page. And this and by clicking on the settings button. This is the settings, c the control panel for the this game. Um, you'll see that we see the name of the game up here, which we can change. The game's unique identification number right here, and the API key. These two numbers are important because we're going to be needing them when we um, add clockwork to our um, example game. Okay, here. so now that I've created the game, I'm going to download the SDK and by the SD, you can find the SDK up here at the top and I'm going to download it and after that I'm going to extract it because it's in a zip file okay so here is the clockwork SDK here are all the files right here okay and the ones that are important are well right now I'm running um, game maker 8 so I'm going to use um, I'm going to use this game resource file. I'm going to go into here, import resources, and I'm going to find where I downloaded the file, which is where is it? Okay, so now that I finally, after practically five minutes of searching, found my download folder and got to the SDK. Here's the game resource file. Great. I'm going to open it and import all these resources. And there we go. Okay. So I've got all these clockwork scripts now. So if I so I just so the SDK is now installed. Okay, so now that we installed the SDK, I'm going to go over to um, Clockwork again, and I'm going to look at Help Getting Started. And I'm going to copy all this code that you see in a block down here, and go back to my game. Create a new object. This object can be called anything you want. I'm just going to call it Object Clockwork Starter. And in the create event, I'm going to paste all this code in. For the game name, it can this game name can be anything that you want it to. It doesn't need to match what you called it in Clockwork. It doesn't need to be for my for my instance. It doesn't need to be catch the clown example. I can just call it um, lol clown madness. Yeah, the game ID needs to match the this over here so let's copy the game ID and paste it in and the API key also needs to be the same so we're going to copy and paste the API key make sure that there's no space right here okay if there's a space right here make sure you delete it and same for over here if there's a space right here delete that too because that will mess it up okay now that's all we need to do um, we're going to go over to our first room and put the object in. If you if your game has multiple rooms, 
the clockwork starter object only needs to be in the first room and that's all that's all you would need to do you don't need to put in every single room now that i've put the um clockwork starting object into the room all i need to do is one last step and it's pretty simple i need to go to resources included files i need to add an included file i'm going to load 39dll.dll this file can be found inside of the clockwork SDK folder that you downloaded earlier. Um, I check, make sure that you check store in the editable GMK file. These are all okay, but it's important that you check that right there. And exporting to the folder containing the game is also what you want right there. And press OK, press OK, and save, and we are done. I can run the game. You'll see that this game works perfectly normally. And when I close it, um, so that, that looked all normal. It looked like the normal Catch the Clown game. However, when I go over to the control panel for Catch the Clown example and I go to View Stats, I can actually see that on January 8th, 2011, which is today, the game was started one time. And if I play it another time, if I run the game again, the game's running, right? If I run the game again, what actually happens is you can see that the game was now run two times in Clockwork. So all these stats are actually updated in real time, and you can see that um, whenever you play the game, this number gets incremented by one. If I were to wait until tomorrow, um, there would be another dot over here representing how many times it was played tomorrow and how many times it was played today. And so you can actually see historical data for that too. Um, I could also see the average frames per second of my game. Um, I'm going to look at the average number of frames per second, and it looks like the average FPS was 21.5. So let's say you, um, let's say someday you sent out an update, and you wanted to see if the new update would increase the FPS rate, and you could be able to see a graph of all the FPS, and you could see if it went up when you sent out the new update. Um, you're probably wondering what the, these two buttons up here do, total and average. For stats that aggregate data like game start, this game start is basically a total of all of the times that the game has started up. And right now the total is at two. So you're going to want to use the total mode for viewing game starts. However, average FPS is not a... Uh, it's not something that you want to view in total v mode because with um, you don't want to look at all the different FPS, the ev all the different FPSs that people got on this day, all added up together. You want to look at the average FPS of everyone who played this game. So we're going to look at average, and that gives us 21.5. If we looked at total, then that would be the total number of the people's FPSs who played this game on this day all added up together. So if like 100 people played your game, it might be at like 200, which would not be the actual average FPS. And that, so that's the difference between those two buttons. Um, so I guess that's it for this video. Um, we set up basic stats and I explained about this graph and also showed you how to get the SDK set up. So if you have any questions with this video, feel free to contact me at robert at madewithclockwork.com. Or you can also press the feedback button on any of the websites and press contact clockwork right here. Um, yep, so I guess I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video.